Hello and welcome back to PC Retro Programmer. In recent videos in this series on the channel, we wrote some reasonably fast assembly language code for drawing lines in CGA Mode 4. And then we did some very rough timings against the line drawing implementation in IBM Advanced Basic, Basic A, whose line drawing implementation is presumably an assembly language routine. However, a viewer raised a valid concern. Perhaps in the case of BASIC, most of the time is just down to BASIC interpreter overhead. So in this video, we're going to do some much more careful timings, and in particular, we're going to subtract away the BASIC interpreter overhead simply by timing some empty loops and subtracting that away from the full code for drawing lines. Then uh, there are three other line drawing implementations that I found, uh, which we're going to compare against. The first is in the Ball and Graphics interface, BGI, which is distributed with their Turbo series of compilers, Turbo C, Turbo Pascal, and so on. And that line drawing implementation is also presumably done in assembly language. Uh, then we have a pure C implementation. Some viewers have asked whether it's actually worth learning assembly or whether a C compiler could be expected to always beat you. So a few years ago, I actually wrote some code in pure C for drawing lines in CGA mode 4 and spent some weeks, uh, perhaps even months, optimizing it uh, to make it as fast as I possibly could. So we're going to time that code and see how it compares with our assembly language implementation. Then I have some code by Richard Wilton from his book, Programmer's Guide to PC Video Systems, which was recommended to me by a friend in the demo scene as having some really fast line drawing code for CGA in it. In fact, he also does line drawing code for EGA, VGA, and a bunch of other video systems as well. So this code is in assembly language and it's really quite reasonable. So we're going to compare against that. It's by far the fastest code that I know of published in a book. The first implementation we're going to look at is the basic one. And for whatever reason, I decided to do all timings in timer ticks. Remember that DOS has things set up. So there are 18.206 timer ticks per second. So the program starts off by changing into CGA mode 4, which is screen 1.1 in BASIC. And then we set the current time to midnight. Then we're going to call a subroutine either side of our code, which does a loop 10,000 times and draws the same line over and over again. And this subroutine is going to return the number of seconds since midnight. So we're going to get two times, T0 and T1, which we're going to subtract and then do our arithmetic. So here's the subroutine here, and it just takes the current time, time dollars, and does some string manipulation and converts it to a number of seconds since midnight. So of course we multiply by the 18.206 to get timer ticks. And I'm also going to subtract away the number of timer ticks that it takes to run exactly the same code, but with a rem statement on this line here. So the rem statement just means that this line is not actually executed, it's just a comment. And by subtracting away the time for this loop uh, that doesn't actually draw any lines, we can subtract out all of the basic interpreter overhead. Now it's not perfect, the rem statement itself actually takes some time as well but uh, it's not too bad. It's going to give us a pretty good approximation. And of course, then we just change into ordinary text mode and we print this value out. So this should be the number of timer ticks that the actual line implementation itself takes. Now we're going to start by just drawing a line from 0, 0 to 0, 0, and then we'll do various other line lengths. We're going to have some horizontal-ish lines, that are almost horizontal, uh, some that are almost diagonal, then some verticalish lines that are almost diagonal, and then some verticalish lines that are almost vertical. And we'll do that for each of the different implementations and compare them. So let's run this code and see what happens. As you can see, it draws a line from 0, 0 to 0, 0, and then we wait really quite some time and it'll give us a number. I've jumped ahead in the video here, and this is the result that it gives. There are 491.6, approximately, timer ticks for 
for that line to be drawn 10,000 times. Now, as I said, there are four cases of interest to us here, two in the horizontal-ish case and two in the vertical-ish case. And obviously the time is going to depend on the exact slope of the line. So in the horizontal-ish case, we're going to time the extremes of an almost horizontal line and an almost diagonal line. And similarly, in the vertical-ish case, we'll time an almost diagonal line and an almost vertical line. So in the almost horizontal case, uh, these are the lines that I chose. And as you can see, they're not exactly horizontal. That would have a zero for the final coordinate here instead of a one. And the reason that we avoid the exactly horizontal lines is there might be special code for that. And we want to make sure that we're timing the generic horizontal-ish code. So then I'm going to take differences of the times. So I'll take the difference for the third line and the second line, then the fourth and the third, and then the fifth and the fourth. And each of these differences is exactly 50 pixels. So by averaging out these differences, we should get a fairly accurate time for drawing 50 pixels in the almost horizontal case. Now, initially, I was also going to do a difference between this line and the 0, 0 to 0, 0 case, but then I realized that that is actually not necessarily using horizontal-ish code. There could even be special case code for this. And moreover, it may be that the final pixel of any line is actually drawn using different code than all the other pixels. This was actually the case for the C code, for example. So this one turned out to be unreliable, so I'm going to throw that result out in each case, but we'll just look at it to check that the times were at least reasonable. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is interpolate back to what a line of length zero would be, just from the timings that I got for these lines. And this time is not going to be zero, and the reason for that is there's always some constant overhead when calling line drawing code. There's always some code at the beginning of the line drawing function that has to be run before any pixels are drawn, and then we have the time per pixel after that. So I'm going to have two numbers for each of these, a constant overhead, and then a time per pixel. But instead of putting the times in timer ticks, I decided to convert these to cycles per pixel. So that would be processor cycles. So let's go ahead and fill in the times for the basic code. And this is what the timings look like. We have a constant time for running the line drawing function in each case. So this is a number of cycles. And then we have a time per pixel. So this is 560 cycles per pixel, which is really quite high when you think about it. Uh, some sanity checks, all of the constant times are all very similar. Of course, they could differ a little bit between the vertical-ish and horizontal-ish case. And also, the two diagonal cases have very similar numbers, which is what we would expect. So I think these are quite reliable timings. By the way, most of the code for this episode is in my GitHub repository. The basic program is called timeline.bass. And in order to time the ball and graphics interface, I've written this little C program called bgoline.c. We just include graphics.h, which is how we get the ball and graphics library. And you also need cga.bgi, which is the CGA driver. This is actually distributed with the Turbo C compiler, so I'm not actually going to put that in my repository, since you presumably already have that if you're compiling this code. And we're going to use CJ mode 4, which uh, Borland calls CGA C0. And this program is going to take four command line arguments, and these are the coordinates for the line that we want to draw. So it'll just be BGA line followed by space separated coordinates. So first of all, we check that there are actually five arguments. Uh, the first one is just the name of the program, BGO line, and then the remaining four are the integer coordinates for the line. And we convert those coordinates into integers using the A to I function. And then we set the time to midnight. So we set up a time struct and we set hours, minutes, seconds, and hundredths of seconds all to zero. 
uh, this is where we actually set the time to those values. Uh, this is to initialize the ball and graphics interface and to clear the screen. And here's where the actual code is for drawing the lines. Uh, so the ball and command for drawing a line is just line and you just pass in the coordinates. So we're going to draw the line 10,000 times and then at the end we'll get the time and convert this into uh, a number of timer ticks again. Uh, so this is the code for converting into timer ticks. You can see the 18.206 here again. And then we'll just print the result to the screen, wait for a key press, go back to text mode and end the program. So now let's uh, check out the timings that I got for the ball and graphics interface. And here they are. You can see that the diagonal lines again very closely match. There's quite a bit of difference in the constant overhead, but this is not going to be very accurate anyway, just because of the nature of the timing that we're doing to get at that. Uh, but it's still, you know, within 10% or so of the other values. So again, I think we have reasonable timings here. So let's move on to the C code. There are actually three files here graphics.c, where the actual implementation of the line drawing function is, and a corresponding graphics.h, and the main program, which is in cline.c. It's just a small modification of the BGI line program that we already saw, so I'm not going to show that. Uh, all it does is replace the calls to the ball and graphics functions to ones uh, in this file here. So this file actually contains some other stuff as well. There's a function for setting the video mode, for setting a pixel on the screen. Uh, there's also a code for loading a PCX file from disk and putting it on the screen. Uh, this is actually written in uh, inline assembly and it might be useful to some people. So I'm just gonna leave it in here. And then we come to the line drawing code and this is really quite involved. Uh, it's many hundreds of lines of code and of course there are multiple cases and it goes on for pages and finally we get down to the actual line drawing code itself which just calls out to the various cases. Now this code does actually special case exactly horizontal and vertical lines but of course it's the horizontal-ish and vertical-ish cases in the generic case that we're actually timing here. And there's also some circle drawing code in here, again in C, and I'll just leave that in for people who want to check that out. So let's take a look at the timing. These are the least consistent looking of all the timings. I'd probably believe the cycles per pixel more than I would the constant times, but there are no doubt some differences in the horizontal-ish and vertical-ish cases. And given that this is in C, it's a little bit hard to control this precisely. So uh, I think these are probably relatively reasonable, say within 5 to 10 percent of the correct values. Anyway, now let's look at Richard Wilton's code. Now, of course, Wilton's code is part of a copyright book, so I can't distribute that myself. But I was very surprised to find that it actually assembles perfectly with Turbo Assembler. Now, if you have a copy of the book, you could just type it in, or if you're lucky enough to have a disk, uh, then maybe you've got the files. And you'll need two things, uh, line 04, which is the CGA mode 4 line drawing code, and you'll also need some code from earlier in the book for computing pixel addresses. So once you have those as two separate files, you can just assemble those to object files and then link them against my wilton.c program which just calls this code and times it. So let's take a look at the timings for Wilton's code. And here the timings are, and you can see that these are much lower than all of the other cases. Uh, Wilton's done a really fantastic job here. And in my opinion, this really settles the question as to whether it's worth writing in assembly language. This was a really, really hard job to get this C code as fast as I possibly could over weeks of effort, and yet Wilton has managed to get uh, something that's basically twice as good in assembly language. Uh, so this is really worthwhile in my opinion. And of course the final code that we want to time is the assembly language code we developed right here on the channel in line4.asm. 
Now I've renamed this to myline.asm uh, so that I can make a couple of changes to it. The first thing we need to do is to export our function publicly so that the linker knows about it so it can be linked from a C program. And for that we just added a public declaration here. The only other thing that I've done here is to remove the main program because that's now going to be in a C file instead of in assembly. So let's take a look at that. That is in something called timeline.c and this is basically exactly the same code that we use to time the ball and graphics interface except there's this extern directive here which tells C about this CJ line function that we just saw in assembly uh, so that we can call it. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same except there are no calls out to the ball and graphics interface. Uh, we just call uh, the set video mode function that I showed you earlier in the graphics.c file which I've just moved into this file for now. And uh, here is the call out to the CJ line function. Uh, everything else here is exactly the same as what we had previously. And so let's time this and see how our code compares. And here are the timings and as you can see we're even a little bit faster again, even beating Wilton's assembly language implementation by a little bit. Now the timings don't look like they match completely near the diagonal but believe me these are very repeatable timings so I'm fairly confident of these. Less so of the constants but uh, definitely uh, quite confident about these cycles per pixel. And obviously the objective of this series is to take this code and optimize it further. So we'll actually get the timings down substantially from what we have here. And uh, so this really shows you that it does pay to actually work hard in assembly. Uh, you can get some really impressive improvements even over a C implementation.